it's extra bold it's sanctuary of reality my comic review series today we have a bonus episode featuring tales not from church and state though of that particular era by dave sim and his collaborator for the rest of the series beginning here gerhard these are from these are all mostly young Cerebus tales, mostly from Epic Illustrated. Epic Illustrated was a magazine anthology, a bit like Heavy Metal, in which uh, was published by Marvel under their Epic Comics line, which was a bit creator-owned, friendly at least, line of books. There was a lot of great, diverse talents that all collaborated in these books, in these um Epic Illustrated especially. There was like John Byrne's Last Galactus story was in there. Um, and there were a lot of others that worked on it. Um, I don't actually own any of these issues. Sad to say. I probably should go buy them. Because they are great. But you can get them check them out for free at Margaret Liss's excellent Cerebus Fangirl website which you can go to at this link. And you can check these particular stories from today out until it's such time as as Dave ever puts out a color uh, compilation of the color tales that were done of Cerebus. Well, not that many. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, color Cerebus. That's quite quite crazy to think about. But it, it happened. And here we are today with them. So go and check that out. And then uh, let's begin with the first Epic Illustrated tale from Epic Illustrated number 16. It's Dave by himself and a tale called Arnold the Isurian. A young boy reads the legend of Arnold the Isurian who laid waste to Astarcion ages ago. How will his mother react to him reading such garbage? This actually predates the appearance of Arnold the Asurian from High Society. Presumably the two Arnolds are not the same. I mean, as you can tell, this guy predates modern Astarcion that, we're, that Cerebus takes place in. So this seems to be a... Uh, a Swintius Poe situation where a guy in modern times is taking on the name of a famous legend. This style of this strip is not dissimilar to that of Windsor McKay who did one of the early comic strips, Little Nemo and Slumberland. It just goes to show another style Dave is capable of mimicking superbly. Though it's a shame he never does use this particular style again that I can recall. Next, from Epic Illustrated number 26 is His First Fifth. Young Cerebus sweeps up a bar when he spots an unattended to bottle of whiskey. Seeing as no one is around, he swipes it and takes off down to the basement where he imbibes in the drink for the first time. A young boy spots him and threatens to tell their boss about his drinking when Cerebus offers him a taste. The boy claims to be innocent, but the suggestion of just trying just a drop leads to his devil side taking over. The boy soon gets drunk, calling the boss names. When the boss overhears, what will be his reaction? This is a great little tale, done entirely without words, just images in word balloons similar to the night on the town which i was actually done after this remember that from the previous bonus video and gah it's in color can you believe that cerebus in color is very different to, to see him in, in in full hues this is most notable aside from being the first pre-issue one cerebus story we're being the first collaboration between dave sim and gerhardt who did not only the heavily detailed backgrounds, but he also did the color work on the, st on the story as well. The two together are a powerhouse right out of the gate, so it's no wonder they began working together on the monthly books soon after this on a long-term basis. Next is The Girl Next Door from Epic Illustrated number 30. 
Young Cerebus notices the little blonde girl next door. He hides shyly from her. When she comes outside to pick berries, he picks flowers for her. But will he make a good first impression? This is a very cute one. Cerebus has clearly always had an affinity for blondes, though that'll later be made into something bigger than merely having a thing for flaxen-haired ladies. Gerhardt's coloring on this one is far more lush and vibrant as it takes place entirely outdoors, whereas the previous tale was all in a dank, damp bar. It's actually a little jarring to see Cerebus's world in such hues and tones, but it's damn fine work nonetheless. For the record, the girl is later named Sherry Hayden during the monthly book when she's referred to later on. Next is Selling Insurance, also from Epic Illustrated number 30. Young Cerebus runs along a rainy dockside with a large bag bouncing on the rough cement behind him. What exactly is in the bag? This one goes to show just how Cerebus' love of money was around even in his youth. Plus, it's a good hint at the beginnings of his barbarian ways. Uh, there's more young Cerebus to be had in Cerebus Jam, the one-shot, which I'll get to in the next bonus video. Plus, he pops up a few times during the monthly book via flashbacks and, and dreams and such. Next is a friendly reminder from Epic Illustrated number 28. Cerebus, in his tax collector role during his late teens, smashes open a door and beats a man to a pulp. What did he do that for exactly? We'd heard about Cerebus's tax collector days during the Countess storyline, and this is the only, actually the only real time we ever get to really see it. It's pretty much what you'd expect. Since we're on the subject of his tax collector days, let's quickly jump away from Epic Illustrated to Anything Goes number three, where we find a short prose tale concerning a moment from this period of his life titled Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Basically, Cerebus, upon being broken up with by Michelle, dons the expensive silk blousey gutter and wields his family heirloom cheese slicer as he goes on his appointed rounds as tax collector. He's gone nuts from losing her, and when a man who looks suspiciously like Harlan Ellison points out his insanity in a crude term, how will Cerebus react? Not really much of a story here, but it's interesting to see an outright non-comic Cerebus tale. The backstory behind it, the guy looks like Harlan Ellison, the term he refers to Cerebus as, are fascinating to be sure, but I don't feel like going into it. So just Google Michael Fleischer, Harlan Ellison in the Comics Journal, and you can read about it in more detail. Truly the most notable thing about this tale is the Neil Adams cover. Look at that. Cerebus is done by Neil Adams. Dave's done Neil Adams style when when doing Bill Sienkiewicz style. So it's neat to finally see it all come full circle. So today we looked at a handful of Cerebus tales. I really enjoyed the variety of styles and the uniqueness to them from what we get in the monthly book. I'm left wondering why Dave didn't do more like them over the years, but I guess he just decided to focus on Cerebus's present rather than his past. There's still a few more non-regular Cerebus tales to come, so look for them in future bonus videos. 